teaching artist with Meta Arts, a nonprofit out of Twisp, Washington. Today, we are going to learn about one point perspective. This is a drawing lesson where we learn how to draw everything to one central vanishing point along our horizon. And it lets everything look like it's going further away. If we're standing here, things in the distance look like they're going further away. And it's one step towards drawing things a little bit more realistic. So for this project, I just used a black crayon, watercolor paper, and watercolors. If you do not have those things, any paper will work and anything you have to draw or color with would also be great. This is also a lesson that has a lot of pretty straight lines. So if you'd like to use a ruler, you can grab that too. So go ahead and gather your materials and we'll get started with our one point perspective drawing lesson. Okay, so we are going to do a lesson in perspective. We'll just need a pencil or you can use a crayon right off the bat. Um, and then if you have a ruler, go ahead and use it. If you don't, that's okay. And if you'd like to color um, with watercolors, we'll use that in, an, in a little bit. For now, I'm just going to move it to the side. And I'm just going to draw with my black crayon today. If you have um, a nice sharp crayon, you can use that. Or maybe you want to just stick with your pencil and draw really dark. Or maybe you want to use a dark colored pencil or a Sharpie. So if you have a ruler and you want to get really precise, that's okay. You would measure down make little marks um, for the horizon line. We're going to make a line about two thirds up, so about this far up our paper. So if I was going to be precise and measure, I'm going to measure maybe three inches down on my paper on both sides and then I line it up and then I draw my line with my crayon. For this lesson, I'm going to just continue on without the ruler, but feel free to use that if you'd like. So this is my horizon line. And since we're working on perspective, we want to kind of find about the middle of our paper. So I'm just going to guess that's about the middle and put a little mark there. And then on that mark, I'm going to draw a line as straight down as possible. This is where if you're using a ruler, you would measure to your line. And then all the lines we're going to radiate, radiate out here are all going to come from where this point is. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line this way and I'm going to try to pretty much match that. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line that way. It's not going to be perfect, but see if there are two triangle shapes that are about the same width and they both meet at the top. So as we go out, we're going to have less wide triangles. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Draw a line down. And then I'm going to try to match that. Sometimes I look at the bottom of my paper and I say, oh, I'm about that far away from my edge. So I'm just going to try, try to draw a line that kind of gets me to there. Again, if you're using your ruler, you can measure that out and then you would draw a nice straight line. Okay, so do this on the same side. Let me get a little narrower. So I went up about that far. I'm gonna put my mark so my eyeballs and my hands know where to go. So I have one, two, three sections, one, two, three do a couple more. See it's a little more narrow and a little more narrow. And whoops, 
sometimes if you push too hard your crayon breaks that's okay and then sometimes it's also nice to turn your paper okay so I have a lot of dark lines here I'm using watercolor paper and my black crayon you're using what you have now where are all these lines pointed at I'm gonna say there's a little farmhouse right back here and these are all my crops so right at the middle on the top I'm going to draw just a silhouette of a house so a house has a triangular shaped roof and a square bottom and this is all just going to be silhouetted silhouetted so I'm just going to color in my farmhouse and we don't really know what it exactly looks like but it's just kind of the shape of it and then we'll make some kind of farmy trees long trees usually this kind of trees planted near farmhouses for windbreaks so some silhouette trees are just kind of this like long narrow shape with a trunk so it just kind of gives the hint that okay there's a house and some trees and all of these crops are pointing into the house now to make our background a little more interesting why don't we just put a little hill behind it then one more thing we can put is straight up from the house let's do a sun peeking over the ridge because the sun rays can be more perspective lines we can go straight up with our sun ray and then we can go a line here a line there we're not going to do as many this is not going to take up all of our time but we'll just put the suggestion that hey there's sun rays and crop rays and they kind of mirror each other okay so if you're using a marker or a pencil and you and you just want to stop here that's fine the whole point of this lesson is when you look at the horizon line the flat line that you see out in the distance there's always a place where everything moves towards it if you're driving down the road the road moves towards it it looks like it disappears but we know it doesn't right it keeps going until it meets up against another landform or building um, but this particular lesson I thought it'd be fun to color them in some crops are many different colors like the tulip fields in Holland or Carnation Washington they have lots of different colors because these could be all flowers growing or you could just do traditional um, crops so I'm going to use my watercolor brush with my water and my little napkin here and we'll get my paints ready to go so I'm going to do the actual top part first because it's my lightest colors um, so I'm going to add some water waken up my watercolors with a little bit of water you can use color pencils or crayons or whatever you have to add color and maybe I'll use the orange just do I'm just gonna do this whole part I'm gonna add more water to my orange so it's a really light wash so it's going to be my sky super light so the reason why I use crayon is watercolors um, you can paint right over crayons crayons like a wax and if you've done the other watercolor lessons through Meta Arts, you'll remember that wax creates cool patterns. You can use different colors of wax to get different effects with watercolors. All right, so maybe your sky's blue, my sky's orange. It's like 
sunset. The sun just came over that ridge or setting under the ridge. Okay, so let's do our green. And we're going to color mix a little bit. So on the side of your palette, you'll put some of this green to the side. We're going to paint this hill next, but my hill is darker than my crops. So if I add some green and then rinse my brush out, grab some blue, that makes a darker green. So green with a little bit of blue makes this nice dark green. I'm just going to add that. I'm just dipping my brush in water because I kind of had a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to paint with that, then I'll get some more paint. Nice soft hill in the background. And I can just paint right over my farm buildings because I have a crayon with wax. If you use Sharpie, you can do the same thing. If you use pencil, you can. It'll just have a different effect. Okay, so now let's concentrate on all of our crops. So am I gonna do all the crops the same? Definitely not. You can pick what colors you want, but I'm going to just use my green. Let's start here. I'm gonna make a pattern. So when you make a pattern, rather than switching color every single time, it's actually really handy to stick with that color. So I'm gonna stay with my green, I'm gonna skip one. And I'm gonna come over here. If you're doing three colors, you might skip two. I'm just going to use green and yellow for my crops. So I'm just skipping one because I'm leaving place for my yellow to go in between. Okay, so I have the green on that side. I keep re-dipping my brush, making sure I have enough water on that. I skipped one and I'm working on this side now. I'm gonna skip another one. It's okay if my brush bumps up against that black crayon border or your Sharpie outline. The wax kind of helps keep my paint in that little section I wanna paint, which is pretty handy. Okay, so now I have my green crops. I'm gonna rush my wash my brush off good and I'm gonna go to my yellow. Maybe we'll start up here this time. So the color helps us see that all of these lines are pointed inward and it really draws your eye in. Because we're standing here and so the, the rows of crops look wider. As we look down the crop lane, they look skinnier and skinnier because they're going further away from us and our eye and our vision. So they appear to go to one place on that horizon line, right by that farmhouse. So this technique works really great if you wanna do a road or you want to draw like you're driving down the road or maybe you're drawing a city and you want to draw a road with city buildings on the side you'd have to find your horizon line and the point that you want everything to go to this is just a basic lesson there's a lot more lessons in perspective to do more complicated shapes. All right, so now I have my farmhouse with all my crops coming from the farmhouse out. All right, 
Thank you so much for doing this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you love your farm fields and learned a little bit about one point perspective today. Thank you so much.